Hello and welcome to another Lake Mead water level update, your first report of 2024. Happy New Year's out there folks, hope your year is off to a great start. And if it's not, no worries, there is still plenty of time to turn it around. And that is pretty much going to be the theme for the update today, as things haven't quite materialized yet in terms of rain and snow in the Colorado River Basin. We're going to look at what to expect as this new year unfolds, so let's jump right in. It's been relatively cool and mostly calm around Lake Mead lately, making it perfect adventure weather to get out and explore by land. Though a few recent storm fronts like the one shown here have moved across the Las Vegas Valley and over Lake Mead lately, another strong winter has just not materialized as expected by many outlets. Precipitation is expected to pick up in the west, but after a mild start to winter, we are actually looking to enter a small warming trend over the next week or so, with temps in southern Nevada climbing to the mid-60s. Is our hopes for another strong winter in the Colorado River Basin over this year? Not just yet. Stay tuned to find out why. For now, let's take a look at our lake levels today. Starting out 2024, Lake Mead is sitting around 1,070 feet above sea level, surprisingly rising about 4 feet since last report, and increasing from 34 to 35 percent full, despite the lack of heavy rain and snow around the basin. This leaves the reservoir at 158 feet below full pool. On Mead's graph, we can observe more optimistic views compared to the last few years. Here in 2024, you can see the elevation climb to 1,070 feet, 30 feet higher than the dire drought levels back in the summer of 2022, and around 25 feet higher than where we started out last January. Current inflows at Lake Mead are 107% of average, so Mead has been receiving a bit more water than usual this time of year. On the downstream side, releases so far have totaled 17% of the required minimum, and of course, we are still pretty early in the water year. On the graph, notice where all the snow melt and spring weather entered the reservoir last year also. It wasn't until about April when things started to really trend upwards, in large part due to releases from Lake Powell upstream. This is one of the main reasons Lake Mead has been able to continue climbing throughout the last few months, despite the lack of a strong winter materializing. Without more snow melt to replenish it, Lake Powell can only donate so much water before it starts running into low-level problems of its own. Taking a look upstream at Lake Powell today, the reservoir sits at 3,566 feet above sea level, dropping around 4 feet since last report, at 133 feet below full, and falling to 36% capacity. The water level has continued to slowly decline since about July of last year, as Powell has continued to supply Lake Mead. As of this report, total inflows at Lake Powell are at 77% of normal, still lingering a bit low like last report. Releases from Powell, on the other hand, already total 26% of the required yearly release down to Lake Mead and beyond. Water managers now wait and see if spring weather will help replenish the upstream supply, or if flows into Mead will once again need to be cut to make up slack. If you recall from the last several updates, I pointed out how the USBR was trying to balance the total content between Lake Mead and Lake Powell in order to reset the system with all the excess water. They achieved this goal late last year, with both reservoirs evening out within 8 million acre feet. Looking at reservoir content today, however, we can see Lake Mead has now overtaken Lake Powell by about a million acre feet. But this is a trend that the USBR isn't expected to continue for much longer. You can see Powell was releasing on average 11,800 cubic feet per second downstream to Lake Mead, while Lake Mead was releasing nearly half that rate at 5,800 cubic feet per second. As already mentioned, without a strong snow melt, Powell can only give so much without getting into Deadpool problems of its own. The total system content in the lower basin as of this report is at 42%, falling 1% from last report. Compare that to this time last year, however, when the total lower basin content was hovering near an all-time low of 33%. If snowmelt doesn't materialize as expected this year, both reservoirs could be looking at more issues come this summer, as thirsty downstream users in Arizona and California ramp up water usage. And though another El Nino and strong winter hasn't taken hold, it's not time for doom and gloom just yet. More winter storms and atmospheric rivers bringing rain and snow are on their way to the west. 
the UC Berkeley Central Sierra Snow Lab outside Lake Tahoe stated that there is still time for big winter storms to materialize in the west throughout the end of this month. Central Sierra Snow Lab, they're up along I-80. They take measurements and have been doing so for about 100 years. They said no need to panic yet. It's usually not until mid-January through the end of January that we, if we really don't start to see these big cold systems coming through, then we start to look a little bit closer on the water impacts. And though the Sierras aren't directly tied into the Colorado River system, any excess water in the Sierras can and should become available for use in Southern California through their vast series of canals and aqueducts, thus reducing some cities' reliance on the Colorado River water. Now the USBR has done a good job lately gaming out these scenarios, and we'll once again check in on the Bureau's 24-month study to see where we're at and what future projections look like. Starting at Lake Mead, let's pull up their graph indicating the best, worst, and most likely scenarios over the next two years. You can see the USBR plans for Mead to continue rising until around May, at which point their predictions split, presumably due to what we just covered, which is whether or not a strong snowfall will materialize soon in the Colorado River Basin. Right now in January, we're right around that 1,070 foot elevation level, and some key numbers I'd like to point out here is first, according to the USBR, the best case over the next two years at Lake Mead is going to be right around the same level we're at now. You can see it never really breaks above here, even in the best case. So even if we did get a strong winter, apparently there are other plans for that water and the USBR doesn't intend for another big recovery at Mead anytime soon. In the worst case, they project that Mead could drop to new lows around July 2025, sinking under the 1,040 foot elevation level, which was the record low from back in 2022 when we were finding all the boats and barrels. That could get interesting. But if we stick with the most probable case, it actually closely follows the worst case, but has Mead remaining above 1,040 feet in elevation, coming close to but not going below the previous lows. Aside from the climate patterns and usage, many of these variations are caused by the USBR themselves, whether it's through high flow releases or increased daily inflows from reservoirs upstream. This indicates to me that the USBR has operational plans to hold back more water in Powell, allowing it to recover, while Mead will be left in its best case to just maintain where it's at now. Though it doesn't seem like major changes are on the immediate horizon according to the USBR, the issues surrounding this subject are about as predictable as the river and climate itself, and are of course subject to change at any moment. If you want to learn more about some of these pressing issues currently facing the Colorado River Basin, including its effects on our agriculture, cities, and climate, make sure to check out the latest Colorado River Watch podcast, where we'll be going over the hot-button stories from Colorado to California, down to Baja and beyond. I'll leave a link to the latest episode here in the video and down in the description. We know you have a lot of places to get your news and entertainment these days, and we want to thank you for spending some of that time here. If you find this content interesting and or learn something of value here today, please give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more. And don't forget to head over to the Mojo Earthworks shop and grab a basic adventure tee if you want to support our work directly. Until next time, stay hydrated, stay happy out there, and we'll see you soon.